is the new Multistrada Rally the ultimate grand touring machine? It's a damn good question. It might just be, and here's why. These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. Welcome to the Ducati V4 Multistrada Rally launch here in somewhere sunny, Sardinia this time. This is the new V4 Rally Multistrada, so where the standard Multistrada V4 is their kind of middle of the road option for, v for Multis now. Your Pike's Peak version is a 17 inch front wheel, sporty, you know, more sports orientated adventure bike. And then this goes the other way towards the longer distance travel, a little bit more off-road capability, and a little bit more comfort and, and touring bike appeal, but you know, we're not talking just road touring, they have actually extended the off-road ability as well. A little bit of off-road now, I'm sure it's gonna be hellish dusty but we've switched to enduro mode so you've got a picture of a helmet now with a peak making me all enduroified so I'm following Mr Mr Chris the off-road expert look at his style oh shit I maybe should do that <laughs> It's really annoying when you follow Chris off road because he's like so bloody good and it doesn't even look like he's trying. We're having like a constant battle of I might fall off, I might fall off. Look, it's Chad. Chad, what do you think of the Motistrada? I'm liking it. Well, you make it, you're doing this and I'm going. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> nice big foot pegs on it. Nice and wide. Not quite as nice as the Desert X ones, I don't think, but they've got the rubbers in these at the moment. Reasonably narrow across the legs. There's a few little jabby out bits, but it's it's pretty good. I'm only in an adventure boot, so I'm not in a full enduro boot, which would push my feet a bit wider. But for, for such a big touring style bike, it's good. And there's not too much. The tank, you know, between your knees as you lean forward, there is quite a lot of tank there. You know, but this this isn't a Desert X, this isn't a middleweight adventure bike, this is a big Grand Tourer that happens to be able to do this stuff, so you can't really fault a little bit of bodywork in the way when you're expecting it to have a 30 litre tank. I mean, it's certainly no worse than the 20 odd litre tank on a Yamaha World Raid. Look at that view. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> little Fiat Panda. That's the best bit, isn't it? £23,000 worth of uh, Ducati Multistrada. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're not doing any more or less than that man's doing in his four-wheel four drive Panda. So Ducati's Multistrada V4 needs no introduction. It was a real big step in the Multistrada family, a V4 adventure bike that was easy to ride, 170 horsepower, ridiculously powerful, good looking and actually really successful. A lot of people really loved them. This year marks 20 years since the first Multistrada came out and this latest one, which is the rally version of the V4, is a phenomenal bit of kit. Now with the V4 range, we've already had the Pikes Peak Edition. So that goes from the normal V4, that steps towards sports bikes. It's got the 17 inch front wheel. It's a, a sharper, angrier, more sporty Multistrada. The Rally takes things the other way. It takes things more 
a little bit more adventure, a little bit more touring, long range, and a little bit more off-road. But let's not forget, Ducati has the Desert X, so this isn't supposed to be an extreme adventure bike. Now, how have they achieved that? There are not enough minutes of video on the internet for me to list all the things they've done. But I'm going to give you a few of the key points they've done to turn the Multistrada into a more capable, long-distance touring bike. Number one, always number one with long distance, fuel range. They've switched out the plastic tank for an aluminium fuel tank. They haven't grown the tank physically much. It's a, it's, you know, a matter of millimetres in each direction, but what the thin aluminium allows is a much bigger internal volume. So the fuel tank's now 30 litres, which along with improved fuel economy has added you know, a significant chunk, 35% to the fuel range. So a couple of neat touches they've got, obviously the adjustable screen, but it's a taller and wider screen than the standard Multi V4 with a new deflector as well. On the side here, you can just about see, there's a little phone box and you can plug that in so you get all your, your, your phone interactive features. That has actually got sort of a foam lining to stop your phone getting rattled to pieces, but it's also air cooled to stop your phone overheating while it's in there all day charging. On top of that, they've given it slightly longer travel suspension. It's 20 mil front, 30 mil rear, and they've gone through tweaking, refining, there's new air vents, there's a bigger screen, they've moved the panniers backwards, they've moved the top box back to give more pillion space. Lots and lots of tiny tweaks. You know, when Ducati went through their list of changes, it was it was as if they'd launched a whole new model. Loads and loads of small changes, small tweaks to sort of refine this thing in response to feedback from their test team and from riders who bought the original V4. What that's created is a bike that is a phenomenal like technological masterpiece. We live in a golden era of adventure bikes. This thing has got 170 horsepower, two massive boxes on the back, but seems to remain stable. It has electronic suspension, which has been again, refined and tuned to suit this bike. It's got radar cruise control, blind spot mirrors. It's got a button on the left-hand switch cube where you can lower the suspension. So when you come to a stop, you can get your feet down easy. It's got a setting that when you lift it off the side stand makes it sag more so you can get on the bike more easily. I could go on and on and on. All these little tweaks designed to make it easier, more fun and better for enjoying long trips on the bike. Brain is struggling with the fact that on the back of that L200 pickup truck, there's a picture, a silhouette picture of a flat track racer, but he's turning right instead of left. I'm guessing it's just how they've printed the decal, but it's upsetting me. The ones we're testing have got the boxes on as well they wanted us to test them with the boxes and with the engine bars and their reason being that that's how most people are going to buy them and ride them so why should we test them on the launch with everything stripped off to make them lighter so the multi strata v4 all of them use rear cylinder deactivation strategy so effectively think of a v4 is two parallel twin engines glued together in a v-shape what they do is when you're in town riding at low rpm cruising around they use rear cylinder deactivation so the, the rear cylinders aren't doing anything and that's to save fuel and it also saves a bit of heat from the rider so when you're cruising along and sat in traffic is not boiling your legs. The first thing I thought about the Multistrada Rally is the same thing I thought about the first V4 Multistrada I rode. Easy to ride. It's not a bike that feels awkward or big and heavy or like it's going to bite you in the backside every time you do something a little bit wrong. It's a real easy, forgiving bike to ride. Where this one really impressed me is then when we moved to some fast roads, we were throwing it around tiny second and third gear corners, left, right, left, right, bumps, jumps, and you're absolutely hauling on this thing. And then when you stop and look at the bikes with you, you're like, geez, they've got giant panniers on them. And this is a 260 kilo bike. It has no right to be that much fun on the road. And that ability to charge through turns aggressively is, it belies a bike of this size. That same feeling carried on to the simple dirt trails we rode as well. We didn't do anything gnarly. And for sure, when you got to something more technical, the front felt a little bit nervous on those those harsh edges trying to turn up a hill but never to the point where i thought i was going to drop it and i didn't have a single foot dab all day so again it's a bike that, that looks after you in that situation this is never going to be a full extreme gnarly off-road bike that's not what it's for i'm sure someone will take it and do that but that's not what it's for it makes cruising a rough track and a gravel road as easy and comfortable as it's ever going to be on a bike of this size. Same setup as, as all the Multi V4s. You can program all of the modes. This one's got an enduro mode that you can uh, turn the ABS completely off on, traction control completely off. And what it also has is a sport mode with the wheelie control that I've turned off this morning. <laughs> Throughout the day, we've jumped on tiny roads, big roads, fast roads, a few
few rough tracks, a few hops, a few jumps, and a few soft patches, and not once has the Multistrada felt like it's gonna get the better of me. I've been really impressed by how easy it is to ride it fast, and the few times when I've really pushed it and got a little bit of movement, a little wobble, I then had to remind myself that I'm riding a huge adventure touring bike with boxes full of camera crap. It's way more capable than it should be. Now the proof is gonna be in taking this thing on a proper adventure of our own, enjoying some big miles, but so far, this new V4 Rally is an incredible machine and I'm a big fan. It is like riding with a small child riding with Chris, but hugely rewarding. <laughs>